Well, hello there and welcome to yet another video by RunGB, this time in a totally different game, Automation, the car company tycoon game. If you have been in my channel and following me for some months, uh, you will remember maybe two or three videos I made some months ago about Automation. Back then it was reduced to an engine creation and design tool and uh, very limited in its scope, but of course months have passed by and uh, Automation has grown. Automation is, for those of you who don't know what it is, is a um, game that in the future, when it's in release state, right now it's in early access alpha, it's going to be a car company tycoon game, which means that you'll get to um, design your own cars, design your own engines, uh, win money selling your cars and invest that money in factories, in um, investigation, in developing new stuff to put in new newer um, cars and uh, higher quality etc. Um, right now as I said it's in early alpha, it's in early access uh, of course the campaign is still not there you can however and design engines to a very high degree of accuracy and fidelity to real life and in the last iterations um, and updates uh, you can actually design your car like for real you can choose your bodywork, you can choose the fixtures, you can choose the engine you put on it, the gears, the suspension. So, yeah, let's do this. Let's do um, a car. Let's make a car from scratch. Now, the first thing is that you can choose and see what your work cars are and engines and whatever. But let's start with something from the very early beginning. Now, what I'm going to do in this video, I'm going to try to do a, let's say, a luxury, very sport-like um, car. Let's say that I have a already sporty car, and I want it. So I want to make a limited edition of it with a very powerful engine. Uh, of course, very expensive, but not going over the top. Not a supercar, but a really, really, really good um, sports car. So to do that, we can't go over the top in expenses, but still we can start with um, pretty expensive stuff. So let's start with the chassis. Right now, only monocoque, no more options. There will be more as the updates come. Second, let's choose the year. The year we are going to do this is year 2K10. It's a good year to make a car. I don't know why, but yeah. Uh, depending on the year you choose, you can have different technologies. Your engines well, will have better resistance. And yeah, the more modern, of course, the more capabilities you can extract of your engines and the more options you will have. So yeah, 10K is a good year. Why not use it and um, start from there? So yeah, materials. I don't want to go with very expensive materials, so we can't really go over the top here. We can go steel, corrosion uh, resistant steel, AHA steel, glued aluminum um, and carbon fiber. Of course, some of them are more expensive than the others and as I said, this is a production chassis. So we are going to go with corrosion, steel, uh, corrosion resistant steel, which is pretty much a very good option for a production car because it's really resistant to the environment. Uh, it doesn't get corroded easily and it's not expensive. <coughs> Next, any engine placement. We can go for a front transversal or a front longitudinal. The transversal will allow you to go for a frontal wheel drive or an all wheel drive. The front longitudinal, however, will let you go for a real wheel drive or an all wheel drive. So depending on that, you well, you want to choose one or another. I'm going to go with uh, longitudinal. From suspension, well, we can go with Mac Person Strut or the double wishbone. Well, the double wishbone, as you can see in the left, sports feel high. We want to have that. This is going to be a sports car. Also, tame tameness high, which is kind of desirable in a car that's going to have very high performance. We don't want it to be wild. We want it to be sporty, but controllable. So, yep, double wishbone, it is for the front suspension. Now, for the rear suspension, we can go for a solid axle coil 
which is not really the best idea for a, a sports car, to be honest. <laughs> we can go for a um, semi trailing arm, and we can go again with a double wishbone, which I think is going to be our option. Again, sports field high and terminus high. Yeah, it's going to be probably our choice here. Seems like a solid, solid choice for a car like this. Now, panel material, steel, handmade in aluminium, corrosion resistant steel, fiberglass, aluminium, polymer, or carbon fiber. Each one of them, of course, uh, has different um, weight, man hours, uh, tooling costs, material costs, safety and environment resistance. So we could go for a carbon fiber here, but again, we are basing this in the chassis of a production model. So yeah, it's going to be a corrosion resistant steel as well. It's heavier, but it's, well, it's going to be the baseline we are going to build our um, car on. Next step is the bodywork. The bodywork we have, well, right now they are a limited selection of choices of bodies we you can choose from. However, um, there will be more as the updates come by. There are already more than in the previous update and the next one is going to bring some more. So we have several of these to choose from and I want to go for a sports legs looking car and uh, from what I have here um, probably this is kind of cool but yeah, th this looks like a CRX actually <laughs> no let's go for something else let's see this yeah that kind of that kind of yeah that that might work <clears throat> so well let's modify it a little bit and see what we can do from here um, you can see that we can click on those highlighted places to move it forward and backwards so let's see how do we want to modify this and um, see how we end and what's the bodywork like when we end with this okay we mostly got it and now we only need to adjust the wheel failings uh, the size of the wheels is decided by how big the opening for the wheels is. Of course, if you don't put fairings, you won't be able to put two big wheels there. And <clears throat> we are going to use some thick wings, uh, thick wheels here because we are going to have a lot of power and we want to harness it. So let's make them not overly big. We don't want to go ridiculous, but yeah, that probably might work. Next step is color. What color do we want our car to be? I'm leaning to this. This blue is, is really cool. And yeah, the, the car really looks like it. Looks like a sporty car indeed. Um, so yeah, that's going to be what we are going to work with. <coughs> this is pretty much it. So let's go for fixtures and start adding things like headlights, indicators, grills, bends, wings, handles, uh, some bonnet things, exhaust, etc. So we start with the lights and we are going to toy with them for a little while and see how we do. Okay, seems that we are done with headlights. That looks pretty cool. Yeah. Looks like it means it, you know. So let's go for indicators. And, um, well, let's place them. As you can see, you can chase the placement, you can chase the size, you can chase the angle. Um, you can even say um, what they look at them by mm, well flipping them upside down, side to side. So they are very different looking options. Uh, basically, um, you are going to see it here. I'm going to add another headlight and I'm going to make it really, really, really small and put it beside the uh, indicator. And yeah, that really looks like it, isn't it? Yeah, I say so. I think so, at least. Okay, next, grills. You want grills because you want to add cooling for your engine. So, we are going to have a big engine. We need some big cooling grills. One in the middle, one big one, that gives us a lot of cooling will be really good. Yep, yeah, and also looks pretty nice. Let's move it a little bit upwards, reduce it, it a little bit on size so we can add a second opening which will be down there 
que adds to the looks, isn't it? Let's enlarge it a little bit. Yep, looks like pretty cool. Now probably we want to add more um, opens in the sides, some bends on the sides. Because, well, right now this is not modeled, but at one point um, the airflow through the brakes is going to be important because you don't want your brake to overheat. Right now, as I said, it's not in the game, but why not doing thing, things right from the very beginning, even while it's not in the game yet? So you can see, well, we can change the placement, we can change the, change the inclination, we can change the shape. So that kind of looks perfect. Yeah, I see the front end is pretty much done, but we can still add something on the bonnet, which is going to give us a little bit more space to put the engine in. Because of course, the bigger your hood is, and the bigger the space under the hood, the bigger the engine you can put in. And as you are going to see, engine size is really limited by the available space you have in your car. Uh, the bigger the car, the bigger the space, the bigger the engine you will mount. So, yeah, that kind of looks okay. Yeah, I think so. So, yeah, let's go to the back side and add some tie lights. So, what do we want to go with here? Let's take a look. Maybe these ones in this flavor. Let's add them here. Here you can see how effective it is. You can as you can see, I just swapped the size and now it looks totally different as when they did in the beginning. And they actually look really cool now. Isn't it? Yep, yeah. let's toy with them a little bit and see how they look at the end. Well, I say they look really cool. So let's add some he things here. The, the, the grills are not just for cooling. They are also aesthetic. So let's add one here. That's going to be our license plate. Uh, yeah, looks fine. And let's add yet another one here. Let's change the dimensions a little bit, make it a little bit bigger. Because, well, it's going to make it look cooler. Isn't it? It's not just a flat surface. Now it has some three-dimensional stuff going on for it. Now we can move the, um, the lights to accommodate for that. Yep, that looks pretty cool. And what will be next? Well, placing budgets, because we want our car to have our logo of our company. And that one looks really good. Yep. It really looks the part, isn't it? Now, next we want to add handles, because if you can't enter your car, <laughs> well, it's a kind of a useless thing to, to have. So let's put handles. We only have two doors, so two will make two. And these also blend very well with the shape of the car. They actually look the part. They, they look like they fit in. So yeah, aesthetically looking, I think this car is pretty much done. Uh, we only have to add, of course, some exhausts. So let's go with a couple of those. Not extremely big, no need to. And uh, yep, yeah, that kind of looks the part. I think uh, our, our car is pretty much done. We only have to add some aerodynamics because of course a sports car needs some downforce. Uh, of course, you are not getting Formula One downforces here, but a little bit is always good because you don't want your car to lift off <laughs> when it's going very fast. You need some downforce to keep it on the on the track or on the road, because this is one of those cars that um, you are going to drive every day. And um, in the weekends, you can take to the to the racetrack to race a little bit and to have a lot of fun driving it to the top. We are also going to add some a, a small, not really big rear wing, which, yep, yeah, that kind of looks cool and it's going to help with the downforce. So yeah, that that's it. That's our car. That's that's it. We don't really need any more. We have placed everything we need. So yeah, let's move on. Of course, one of the nice things of any of these game is, and games is to name your creations for whatever, like whatever you want to call them. 
Uh, I'm really bad at naming things, so I'm going to call this call this sports one body. So now we go here, sports one body, and now we hit a new model. And now using the body we just created, we are going to place an engine in here. But we are not going to use any engine I have already built. You are going to see me creating an engine for this car. Actually, you are going to see me doing it. So, yep. Yeah. All we have to do is to look at how much space do we have under the bonnet, choose whether we want rear wheel drive or all wheel drive, and we are going to go for all wheel drive because I'm going to put a lot of horsepower in this uh, in this car, and uh, the more wheels you use to put the power down on the ground, the more controllable it's going to be, and the better acceleration and the better handling. So yeah, all wheel drive is going to be. So the next thing we need is to choose an engine, but we are not going to choose one, we are going to build a new one from scratch. So we are going to go for a B8 and I'm going to place some limits on myself here. We are limited by the space of our engine, but we are also going to be limited by the quality. So you can see um, in the right left side of the screen, there's a quality tech pool which right now is zero and zero. You can put it to one side, you can put it to the other. You can reduce the quality, so parts will be cheaper but less quality. You can move it all the other way and place high quality, which is going to make bigger costs, but much higher quality parts. I'm going to limit myself to a top of 15 points for the whole engine, which I can spread through different sections and different parts. Um, I'm going to go for an AISI, well actually magnesium, why not? I mean, this is going to be a limited edition, so yeah, magnesium is cool. Now, how big do we want this engine to be? As you can see, there are some arrows, and these arrows give you the idea this red arrow means that this engine won't fit in the engine bay. However, this one will. So... How big do we want to go? Remember that later on we are going to be adding things on top of that engine. So we want to make a little bit of space for those things that we are going to add. So, yep, yeah, let's make it a um, 6 liter engine. 6 liter engine sounds right. Actually, it's more than what I had planned. <laughs> but yeah, it seems that a 6 liter will fit in into the engine bay, so why not? Yeah. Looks like a good choice. Let's put it at just under 6 liters. I'm being conservative on the stroke. I want a bigger bow than a stroke because bigger strokes means that later on we will have problems with high RPMs. And I want this engine to be um, able to handle big revolutions. Now, crankshaft of billet, billet steel, uh, I beam steel or titanium. Well, as you can see, the material cost of um, titanium is very high and with I-beam steel we still can get max RPM really high. Not as high as the titanium but look at the cost. It's really important. We don't want to go over the top. So I-beam steel is going to be. As for pistons, lightweight forcet gives us really max, good max RPM and average torque which is not bad but as you can see now the engine won't fit because we have added a crankshaft and that crankshaft has added some length and that length means that the engine won't fit into the bay so we have to downscale our engine until it's going to actually be able to fit into the engine into the, the engine bay so yeah maybe a five liter would be good enough yeah as you can see the limit is just there so it's going to be a 5 liter engine. Yep, pistons, lightweight forcer. And yeah, that's our bottom end. Good enough. Good enough. Top end. Um, du dual overhead cam. No doubt about that, that. And we are going to go for um, four valves. Um, mm -hmm. Head material is going to be AISI. Compressive radio, I'm not going to touch right now. Uh, camper file, well, we are going to move this because I'm going to use a variable valve timing 
and uh, variable valve lift. Uh, <coughs> both of them, well, change the profile of your of your valves. And if you have a variable one, you can choose from two different ones and make your engine perform really well at low RPM and at high RPM, both of them. So this looks like a solid selection, 30 of 85. Aspiration, natural aspirated, I don't want a turbo, this one. Injection, multipoint, AFA, direct injection, multipoint. Mm, direct injection is much more expensive, so no. One throttle per cylinder, yep, yeah, looks like cool. And an intake performance intake, but oh no, 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 that won't work. A standard intake would, but a performance one won't. However, if we change throttle per cylinder to single, it fits. Even with twin, it fits. It fits on height, but you are going to see very soon that no, it is still too big. We really need a single throttle per per cylinder that's kind of underwhelming but yeah you can't you can't put something really big uh, mechanical injection will go in but it's extremely expensive so yeah maybe we can go with single point afi i mean direct injection is simply not going to fit in as you can see uh, single point will so yeah well that's a limit we have on our engine but still is big enough i guess that we still can get a very good power out of this with that now next the intake as i said performance fuel type we are going to go for super super and liter which is you you can purchase it in any gas station here in europe so yeah it's pretty common and it's a sport car so we really need the high octane rating let's increase the fuel mixture uh, we don't want to go overly rich because then the engine will run into problems but well we can increase the ignition timing and go up on the rpm as i told you i was very conservative on the stroke because i want to be a very <coughs> good engine at high revolutions now we can go for a um, header uh, exhaust of a long tubular Dual exhaust, we have two after all in the car. And um, yeah, maybe 300 horsepower per exhaust is good enough. Let's see if we can get 600 horsepower of, of, of this engine. A catalytic converter, because of course we want to comply with the laws. Um, straight through, first muffler, and a reverse flow, second muffler. So the engine is loud, but not too loud as to break the law. So let's take a look and see how this engine runs. Ooh, this looks promising. Maybe we can hit maybe 450 horsepower, we'll see. Yeah, it's increasing really well. A very flat torque curve, which is also highly desirable. And um, seems like something wasn't really okay. Yeah, the engine is running rich and reducing the power output. Yeah, let's reduce so the fuel mixture a little bit and do some more testing. And yeah, from now on, what I'm going to do is to change the fuel mixtures, the cam shaft, and the cam profiles. I'm going to change the ignition timings. I'm going to change the compression radios. I'm going to um toggle with the rpm and see exactly how much power can i get out of this engine we are not really bothered by the economy um because whoever buys this car is going to be rich so whatever um so yeah let's toy a little bit with the engine and see what we end with okay we have played around a little bit and we are hitting a little bit of a compression radio problem here but right now should be okay yeah, 570 horsepower. That's a lot. Uh, I'm wondering if I can hit 600. And uh, as you can see, the manufacturing costs are not insanely high for a high-end engine like this, which is going to be, after all, in a very expensive car. So um, let's increase the quality in the top end, in the bottom end, by 5 in both of them, and in the fuel system as well, and see what we achieve. Well, we achieved almost 600 horsepower with a 15 quality 
I reserve for myself to toy with. So can we steal 600, 600 horsepower out of this engine? Let's increase displacement a little bit. Almost there. Almost there. We are only 3 horsepower short. Um, let's see if we can increase the ignition timing a little bit. Yeah, we can. Didn't increase a lot, but we can increase it a little bit more. Let's see. One more horsepower. But we are running out of fuel octane rating here. Let's increase a little bit the stroke, a little bit more to increase the capacity. We still can fit the engine into the car. Just one horsepower to go, and we have 600. See, uh, 600. But come on. Okay, this is too big. This is okay. This is going to be a very tight fit into the engine, but into the engine bay, but whatever. Let's see. And yeah, we got it! 600 horsepower out of a um, 5 liter engine. However, as you can see, we have too much heat for the car we have. We don't have enough uh, cooling power. So we have to reduce this by a little bit. How can we do it? Well, Increasing the stroke has increased the, he the heat, so let's reduce it and see. Can we go one less? Yeah, we can go one less and still retain 600 horsepower. So let's see how this sounds. Oh, that's music to my ears. As you can see, the connecting rods are having a little bit of trouble, but not too much. Uh, the mean time between failures is actually very high in this engine. So, yeah, that's that's our engine. We are going to use it. Let's update this. It's a 5.1 liter and uh, NA for naturally aspirated. And let's save it. Okay, it's saved. As you can see, it's not really expensive. It's a little bit intensive on labor, but it, the material cost is not really high. So it's going to be an expensive engine, no doubt about it, but it's, no, it's not over the top. It's, it's not one of those um, massive engines that cost a million to, to, to be build. So let, let's save it. Let's go out. Let's choose the engine and put it into the car. And now we have the engine in the car. You can see the power curve here. Now gearbox manual, we don't have automatic yet, but there will be in the future, no doubt. Uh, double clutch, why not? I'm thinking that for this much power, maybe a six gear uh, is, is desirable. Wow, top, uh, top speed, 336 kilometers per hour. That's kind of cool. Okay, let's adjust the gear so we can just barely reach it with the sixth gear. And spacing, let's put it a little bit down here. Later on, probably we will have to change it to accommodate for problems with the wheel spin and whatever. But right now, let's leave it here. Uh, differential, a standard open differential, right now, no other choices, there will be the future again. And let's move into the tires. Let's use a sports compound road tire. Let's increase the tire width and the rear tire width. We are going to have thicker rear wheels than front ones. Let's increase the diameter, let's increase the rim di diameter, 18 inches of rim, that's pretty sport-like. Reduce the wheel diameter a little bit, we don't want to be too big into the base. And yeah, that actually looks like a perfect fit. And also in the rear side, looks perfect. Okay, next in line, brakes. We are going to need really good brakes. Uh, four pistons in the front. Path type right now doesn't do anything, so yep. Um, this size, as big as we can go in the front axle, we really have to have really good brakes in the front. In the rear, we don't need that great 
um, brakes so we can go for two pistons and a smaller disc size next suspension now we can tell you here with the stiffness we can re we really want to stiff the suspension because if this is going to be sports car we want yeah something that doesn't go and wobbles around each time you take a, a, a curve uh, camber let's add a little bit of camber as well here and um, damper stiffness without going too much because we don't want to go too heavy there otherwise this if you meet a bump in the in the in the road you are going to just go airborne basically uh, let's reduce the height the right height to 180 millimeters that's cool now the weight right now the game uh, models the weight of the body uh, the chassis and the engine but doesn't model the driver the the seats the dashboard the the equipment is not included um, in future versions will be right now you have to make an estimate of uh, how heavy your car is now we add a little bit of weight so account for that not a lot because this is again this is going to be a sports car so it's going to be having light um, equipment so yeah that's fine weight distribution we can add a little bit of bias towards the back side uh, we actually want a good distribution of weight at high uh, speed because we have an all-wheel drive um, so it's highly desirable now cooling as you can see cooling we only can provide for 524 uh, kilojoules per second going down improves our aerodynamics however we require 223.7 kilojoules per second so we have barely enough cooling at um, total open um, vents so yep yeah, that's it that's our car and look at that 317.8 kilometers per hour of speed three seconds acceleration zero to 100 kilometers per hour that's extremely good <laughs> if i may say so quarter mile in 10.880 seconds at 212 kilometers per second i'm going to put this in imperial units in a second as well guys so you if you are american or british or you are more used to to american stats uh imperial stats you will be able to see it however let's take a look power as you can see well here it changes power goes up after it's year change looks solid your weight who looks like understeering there quite a little bit of understeering i'm going to have to toy a little bit with the suspension in a second to avoid that also that's too much body roll probably i want to stiffen the suspension as well because over three degrees is a little bit too much acceleration this is actually really good the blue line is that the wheels are spinning um, the red line is um, the top grip your wheels are able to handle and the yellow one is the actual top performance you get with those uh, this the power you get and the wheels you have if you don't go into the blue of course so that good looks good yep yeah, it does now the weight distribution looks solid yeah looks pretty much almost 50 percent which again for an all-wheel drive is really good body bumps i don't understand which this graph means so whatever and downforce which is just a little bit not too much but you don't want too much either you just want enough to keep your um, car on the road without <laughs> taking to the skies so i'm going to work a little bit with the suspension to solve the under steering and see how we do so we are back and as you can see there's no longer any understeering we have a perfect balance between the rear axle and the front axle until we lose control and when we lose control what we do is to understeer because you can go down down is understeering but if you don't balance things out you can actually go up and if you go up that means that the car spans out of control so what you want is this it's a perfect balance until you simply can't keep on turning at that speed and when that happens what you want is more understeer than oversteer at least it's my favorite way of driving <laughs> how did i achieve this well for beginners i changed the tire width as you can see now they are both equal 
size. This means that you get less grip behind than in the front, so you don't um, understeer. Now, of course, what this means is that you have now less grip, and less grip means that um, look at this acceleration. That after I did this, I had a blue line here in the cursor. Second year was actually spinning a little bit. So what I did was to change the drive train. I increased a little bit the gear ratio to keep well the uh, RPMs under control and the power under control and to make the second year to be a little bit more controlled in that particular zone. And so uh, what I achieved was exactly that. The wheels don't spin anymore. I also changed the weight distribution a little bit. You are going to see it in a second. The result of that, and I changed the suspension. I hardened it a lot. I changed it a little bit the camber, equalized it between both. I made a stiffer suspension in the front and in the back um, to help with the understeering as well. And um, yeah, I achieved, I think, a very good balance. As you can see, there's no uh, one wheel spin at second gear anymore, and the controllability is perfect. Body roll has also degrees a lot now is 2.67 uh, degrees which is perfectly good for a car like this and yeah we are going to rename it and save it sports one deluxe which is going to be our car now what i'm going to do is well take a look at the economy well it's 14 liters per 100 kilometers it's not economical but hey what do you want for 600 uh, horsepower come on what do you want <laughs> so yeah what i'm going to do now guys is to change this into imperial units so you can take a look and understand it if you are used to imperial units be right back and back we are and there you go all the stats in imperial units uh, 600 solar power, the weight in pounds, weight distribution, uh, top speed in miles per hour, acceleration right now is in from 0 to 62 miles per hour, uh, quarter mile is also measured in miles per hour. So yeah, those are all the stats uh, of the car in Imperial units, so you can get a better idea of exactly how this car um, performs, which in my, if I may say so, is really 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 good <laughs> now let's go to the engine so you can see it also in imperial units so here we have it <clears throat> all in imperial units uh, as you can see the bow and stroke uh, is 3.776 inches the stroke is 3.441 inches and the Complete stats are there, the torque in feet per pound instead of in newtons, um, NTBF is in miles. Um, so yeah, you, you can get the idea <coughs> on Imperial units of how this engine actually performs. Which again, if I may so say so, is actually pretty good for the small time I invested in it, because I didn't spend a lot of time doing this. Of course, the commentary I'm adding afterwards, but I actually designed this um, quite live. I mean, I was commentating as I was designing it, but later on I discovered that the quality of the commentary wasn't really, really good. Um, the sound quality, I don't know, the story trolled me and it, I, I could barely be heard. So I decided to edit this and to make it a little bit shorter and add post commentary. Overall, the design process of this car took me maybe 45 minutes. Uh, so yeah, that's it. That's the car, that's the engine. So guys, if you want to see more of this, just tell me. Uh, tell me if you want to see some me building something, whatever. I don't know, a uh, SUV, a um, normal car, an economy car, uh, the limits you want to see me working with, if you want to see more videos like this, of course. Anyway, this is a very good game. And if you have seen this and you think it's a neat game to try, you can do so, because there's a free demo. Check out in the description below for the, um, for the link to Automation website. Uh, download the demo and if you like it and you want to try the full early access version, you can purchase it. As always guys, thank you very much for watching and see you later.